Today, we're gonna to talk about people or process, which is more important to your business. I'm Brady Nash, and this is The Accidental Entrepreneur. So I've noticed there's a lot of debate, um, pros and cons around, you know, is it people that's more important to a business success? Um, is it processes that you have to have? And I'm here to say like, both are important. Both are super important. And I want to talk about, in my experience, what, what we've done and what's allowed us to grow in the different stages because it's super important and relevant, right? There's people listening that might be a solopreneur or you've got a small team of five or 10 people or teams that have hundreds of employees. And I believe in the early stages, for sure, it's almost all people. Um, you probably don't have processes. In fact, in a, a small startup business, you're trying to figure out your processes. So having people that can hustle, are versatile, that don't complain, that take action, can wear multiple hats, like you need some rock star talent in a startup. It's why so many businesses fail, is you need a really solid group of individuals that are close knit um, that are going to do whatever it takes. And so for us, it was all about people. It was all about our willingness to do anything and everything and whatever it takes. It takes what it takes. And that, that's, that was great. Um, but the problem is if you only have people and you can get really good people, we went through this transition. We got really good at finding just rock star talent. I was really good at recruiting, finding really good people of high values, high work ethic um, as we were building the business. But what happens is it's tough to scale that way. One, it's tough to find really, really good talent. The other thing is typically people that are uh, high performing, that have whatever it takes, they're just gonna figure it out, right? Literally the whatever it takes becomes a problem because it's there's no process to it. And when you start having more people that do customer service, more people that um, do sales, they're gonna find their own ways of doing these tasks to be successful. The problem is, is people will do them differently. And that's where the problem comes in. What used to be a strength for you when you were smaller is now uh, inhibiting you from growing. It causes confusion with customers. How fast do they uh, get responded to? What's the expectation? Uh, same thing on sales process. If you have people selling differently, marketing differently, sending a different message, that can cause problems when people think they're interacting with your company, but they're different people are doing things differently. And so all of a sudden, like I said, what used to be your strength of you do whatever it takes, you're, you're selling a customer, um, you're supporting them and they grow what to expect when you add more people into that mix, that's a negative. And so you've got to find out what's working. And as you establish the, the metrics for what's successful, you need to start documenting your processes and how you do it um, so you can teach others. So when you do hire someone else, you already have, they don't have to refigure it out. They don't have to go through everything that you've already spent years doing. It's we found the process, we found the metric, and this is what it is. A lot of people have it, but they keep it in their mind. So I had to learn to, how do I take what I've learned, the intangibles, and how do I write it down so someone else can follow it? And it doesn't take them years or you know three years or five years or 10 years to learn. Like, here, you study this, ask me questions, I'm gonna teach you. And inside of a month or two, I'm gonna get you pretty far down the line where you're gonna be duplicating. That's you know what's taken me years to do. And so both matter, people matter, for me, still people is number one because people can destroy you. I don't care all the process in the world. If you don't have good people, I mean, they're just going to destroy you from the inside out. But if you just get a bunch of people, even if you can get rock star talent, if you don't have process, you're going to have absolute chaos because everyone's going to be running. They're going to be high performing. They're going to be getting stuff done and it's all going to be different. And you're going to create a lot of conflict. I, I went through that. And so the idea behind process is you also don't have to go and always get elite talent. You can have a system where you can take someone with little to no experience. Um, again, hopefully they have the values of, you know, your core values and ours were, you know, excellence and ambition and happy, grateful, those things. But you can take someone with little experience, plug them into a system and they know what they're doing and they know why. And so they can get caught up to speed very quickly. So your customers get a same consistent experience when they call, whether it's they're talking to Jane or John or, or Dave or Darlene or whoever it is, 
like they're getting the same type of experience. And that's where as you grow as a business, you know, some companies have SLAs, you know, service level agreements, right? Like what is your commitment that we're responding in X amount of time? These are the things that we follow up after a customer is with us. We follow up with them a couple of weeks later to do a follow up check. And we have a process around that. That's ensuring that they know that we care and we're making sure we identify any issues. And so both are successful. Process becomes so crucial to scaling. And for us, we started implementing processes. We're continuing doing that. The other thing is when you're smaller, you might not have enough people to establish a process because no one's going to follow it. We ran into that issue. We tried to establish a lot of processes when we were so small. We spent more time trying to develop the process than we had training somebody new. And it was counterproductive. We didn't have enough. Now, as we've continued to scale, now we have multiple people in the same role. Now we're finally getting the benefit of process. So early on, here's the other side that people don't think about. There's some people that want all these processes. This is actually, I'd say, the number one killer for entrepreneurs. They try to have all these processes figured out before they're actually doing it. The problem is you're guessing at what you think is going to work. Start doing the work. Figure it out, whatever it takes first. Once you actually iron out what needs to be done from that experience, instead of guessing in what you think it is, then go and document. Don't try to document everything out first and then go and do it because you're going to be wasting a lot of time. Dive into it. Start doing it. Take notes about what you're doing and then make adjustments. Once you've kind of ironed it out, then do the process, then document it, um, and then teach others, and that will allow you to scale and grow. So now I want to give you a little bit more meat. Okay, so I'm going to recommend a book because I'm not going to talk for hours and go into what this book does. Uh, you can YouTube videos for it too. Um, check out the book Traction by Gina Wickman. Traction by Gina Wickman talks about EOS, which is the Entrepreneur Operating System. It's going to address people. It's going to have talk about your values, talk about the right people, getting the right people on the right seat on the bus. But the biggest value I got from that was also their process around building processes around your people, around setting a vision, getting people on the same page. How do you deal with issues? How do you have accountability? Which is really important even with owners. If you're a business that have multiple owners, it's so important because it's a third party voice that instead of you guys fighting, especially if you've got equal partners, it allows you to identify your issues together, but then have accountability with each other when you're the owner, like who's holding you accountable? Well, it's not about having a boss, but it's about you hitting your goals. It's about you hitting whatever dreams or aspirations you have and writing it down, but then having a plan to execute that. And so that's what I loved about it uh, for me and my business partners was it was a way for us to get all on the same page, have accountability. No one wanted to show up to the next week level 10 uh, meeting and not have their stuff done that we said we were going to do. It allows you to identify these issues to move very, very efficiently in the crazy world where we got emails and phone calls and family stuff that comes up. We can be really, really busy, not accomplishing much. And so, so EOS and Traction is going to help you guys identify all these things, get them down and literally get traction inside of your business, um, deal with people issues and you know how you scale and grow. It's the best book um, I could recommend. As you guys know, we've had incredible growth over the last you know decade, the last five years, we've made the Inc. 5000 list for fastest growing companies uh, in the United States. I'm not saying that to brag, I'm, tr I'm saying it to try to give myself some credibility that I know what it takes to grow. I know what it takes to grow organically from three people to now over 120 and growing. And it's the best advice I can give you to have consistent planned growth. So my final thoughts, people matter, talk is cheap, back it up with action. Everything I say, everything we do, we try to make sure what is my plan? People matter, great Brady, what are you gonna do about it? So if for you, you say, yeah, people matter, your, your team matters. Awesome. What actions do you actually take to prove it? You can tell your spouse, you can tell your kids you love them, but if you don't put action behind it, it's meaningless. So take accountability for whatever that is. I'm not telling you to be overly generous. I'm not telling you, you got to be a, a Scrooge. I'm just saying, feel good about how you're training your team. People matter, prove it. So one final question I'm going to leave you with. Let's just say 20 years from now, you've achieved everything you wanted to in the business world. You've made all the money, you've got your house, your cars, you've got your, your funds set up, your trust funds, whatever it may be, right? You've achieved that. When you look back, are you happy how you treated your team? 
I'm not telling you if you did a great job or not. You ask yourself that. On the path that you're currently on, you go and you achieve all your dreams and all your successes. Are you proud of it? Are you proud of how you treated the, the people that helped you get there? If you are, awesome. You're doing the right stuff. If not, why not? And what are you going to change right now so that success you can look back and be proud of? Because I can tell you, I've met a lot of people that have had financial success that are miserable and they feel guilty about what they did. They're not giving their money back, but they feel bad about it. So for me, how we build our businesses matters. For me, how we build our businesses is more important than how big we build our business. Because you get to a certain point when your needs are met, your family's taken care of, how much money do you need? A couple extra thousand square feet on your house is nice, but not if you feel crappy about it. And so make sure you feel good about your achievements of how you did it. It's like running a race and cheating, right? You know that you did something you weren't supposed to like, yeah, it's tainted, right? Don't taint your success. Don't taint your success because you screwed over your customers. You, you took advantage of your employees. Treat them well. I'm not saying you can't make money. I hope you make lots of money, but just take care of the people that help you get there, including your customers, including your employees. And I promise you, you're going to look back uh, and smile about all the challenges you went through and what you learned, no matter how much success you had or you didn't have. It's something you can be proud of. And um, I'm rooting for you. The world needs you. We need you. And thanks for taking the time. And I look forward to talking to you guys next time.